So, let's speak about the ephemerality yes. in your work. I mean, I'm not against that word, but it's not a word that resonates for me strongly. It's not a word that I use myself because, you know, ephemerality is like something which kind of is there and then is gone. That's true, that is an element of my work. On the other hand, it's repeatable. And like, for example, if you think of, you know, Greek antiquity, like Platon or something, like ideas were the things which were, the, were considered the most permanent, you know? like. The work is not necessarily fleeting because it can be repeated. It's an idea which remains, you know, and it's very robust. You can't really kill an idea. You can't break an idea. It's very. You can break an object, but you can you can forget. Exactly. And very. in our society, we forget a lot. No memory. If the idea is good, people don't tend to forget. I mean, like there's many ideas which remain. You know, like in French culture, for example, spending time here, like. It's very much an idea of politeness in language, you know? It's not really necessary for a democratic nation like you are now, but it comes from other periods and a, and a regional culture which developed here. This idea of being very polite in conversation has not disappeared, you know? But it's not really necessary for a bourgeois culture. Yeah, but this is kind of general idea. We are speaking about idea of some precise people and in this and more precisely about your ideas. Yeah. And like you said, they can be forgotten, but you can organize if there's enough interest. Nothing is permanent in this, in this planet, you know? If you want to make something almost permanent, you make an effort. You build a museum, you build an archive, you touch it with white gloves, you, you do a lot of action to make it somewhat permanent. You restore it, you know? So nothing is permanent. If you just keep a painting, somewhere in the cellar, it's not, it's going to deteriorate, you know, it's also not going to, if you don't give it under, you keep it under the sunlight, it's going to, a drawing, it's going to go away. Yeah. It's not permanent in itself, it's, it, it becomes more permanent because we take care of it. It's the same with ideas, or let's say rules of the game. I work a lot with rules, games and their rules, so if you build a foundation, like for example the Balanchine Trust, like they have made an effort, like the museums make an effort to wear white gloves. They make an effort to have people who know the ballets, who teach it to ballet companies around the world. So there's an effort to make, to create, to make something more long lasting on this planet. You need to make an effort. Then you can make this effort against destruction, like with material objects. You can make this effort against forgetting with more intangible stuff, but it's, it remains an effort. So in fact, you really care for memories. But in a new way. No, it's so new. Like, it's not so new. It, but as a statement, it's new. Because what, what's your point about uh, dematerialization? I mean, to me, there's many points. But like, one point is that, like, I think in the 80s and the 20th century in general, like, there was the idea that, like, the good life is to kind of consume consumer goods. To me, that doesn't seem a very deep idea of the good life, you know? So, dematerialization doesn't mean that much, but maybe it does mean going away from this idea of the good life to maybe newer and older forms of the good life. Because if you look at most other cultures in the history of humankind, their idea of the good life was not to, was not to produce goods and consume them. Their idea of the good life was maybe to meditate, to have good social relations, to have a stable social structure, or whatever the ideas might have been, you know, to be on your own. There's many ideas of the good life, but but the idea that consuming goods is what is like the idea is a relatively new idea, and it's not going to stay for long. Yeah.